Okay, so today I am uh, making a pinwheel petal uh, tropical deco mesh wreath. You can see how it's turning out. I'm almost done with placing the petals on here and I just wanted to make a short video to show you how to make this petal. Um, this is a basic leaf design. Uh, it's Julie from Julie's Wreath, Wreath Boutique's design. She's a creator on YouTube that I absolutely love and follow. Um, but I did a twist on, on her design, literally. I'm gonna show you how I did it. In this wreath, I used green deco mesh for all of the, the base, the first layer. The second layer, um, I am using alternating yellow and orange uh, deco mesh, making this pinwheel petal. All right, set that aside. And this is what I started with. This is a 12 inch metal wreath base. In this um, 12 inch, there is one, two, three, four, five, six sections. And a section is from bracket to bracket. There are six sections. Each section gets five petals, okay? Um, I use this, the middle two, the middle two there, I don't know if you can see this, but there are one, two, three, four, four rings on this. I only use the middle two. I attach my first layer, which is the green uh, petals on this out next to the, not the outside, but next to the outside one. And then the third one in, I put my second layer. Okay, that's how I do it. And then to hide the work, I am going to put this sign in the center and it will sit right on top of all of this like that. See how cute that is? And it is going to hide all my work, okay? And I also put a felt back on there um, so that the back, you know, the back looks yucky, but I put a felt back on there too hide all of that as well and also so it doesn't scratch up your door or anything a nice soft you know backing to it all right so I just wanted to show you how to make this petal okay so I've got orange on here I'm in my last section so I need five petals so I've done orange so I'm going to alternate with yellow each one of my squares is 10 inches so this particular deco mesh comes in a, a 10 inch uh, width so I'm going to cut a 10 inch length so I'm going to get a 10 by 10 square that's that is important for the petal that is the magic number okay I'm just going to hold this down and I've got my I've got a glass cutting board here that I'm cutting on because I use a wood burning tool to cut my deco mesh. Um, it helps with the fraying. It doesn't stop the fraying, but it helps to reduce it significantly. So I do like the wood burning tool for deco mesh projects and poly burlap projects, okay? So I'm carefully measuring my 10 inches and I am cutting in between the threads as much as I can. That also helps to minimize fraying. Whew my it's very hot so I'm just trying to use the very tip there we go right in between the threads as much as I can there we go okay and I didn't quite stay in between the whole way but mostly this deco mesh is very sticky it loves to stick to itself okay so here's this here's how I make the petal Okay, now that I've got my square, there is the cut edge, which I just cut, and there is the finished edge. This is uh, the finished edge of the roll, how it came from the store. So I put the finished edges right and left, and the cut edges are up and down. And I take the corners and meet them together to make a triangle, and then just kind of fold down the triangle then in the center, I just squeeze it, squeeze it, pleat it, squeeze it. 
accordion it up. And this is Julie's basic pedal. This is what she calls her basic pedal, okay? Just like that. Now what I do is I switch hands because I want to get I want to get both finished edges together and I twist it and lay it on top. And then both my finished edges are now together like that. You see that? That's that's why I twist it and lay it on top. So it's it's Julie from Julie's Wreath Boutique. Her, it's her basic petal design. And then I put a twist on it to get it to get it to do this. And then I also kind of lay it at an angle so that the, the finished edges are making more of a, a pinwheel. See how that look, pretty that looks? And I just take my zip tie I'm zip tying it on. This is a tricky part. You gotta have some strength to do this. But zip tie it on. Sometimes I give it an extra pull with some pliers. There we go. And you want to lay each petal you place goes on top of the previous petal. So you get a nice layered effect. Cut off your excess. And I twist down that not from the zip tie. Okay, so orange, yellow, now orange. So again, take this out of the way. You want to try and not touch this deco mesh because it it just wants to it wants to fray. <laughs> so the less you play with it, the the more um, the the more uh, the nicer it stays. Okay, I am just kind of melting some tinsel that is sticking out from the last cut. And again, I'm measuring my 10 inches. as much as I can because um, this deco mesh is is uh, like it's woven it is it's a woven plastic mesh and if you can stay if you can avoid cutting the vertical uh, threads as much as possible it, it does really help with the um, with the fraying okay again my finished edges are right and left and I'm meeting my corners together, pressing down and pleating up the center, making the basic petal, switch hands, give it the twist and lay it on top of one another. Mm -hmm. And then I just kind of shape that petal so I've got, I get that nice, that beautiful full look pinch the bottom and put it on the frame. So this is number two of my last section. I just get my zip ties from Dollar Tree. You can get them anywhere. But Dollar Tree is convenient. Oops, this one's backwards. trickiest part getting these zip ties on and it's backwards again Kim good grief when I go to make a video to show y'all it never works okay there we go now we got it Okay. Just shape your petal. 
since each one lays on top of the previous one that I did. This is turning out so pretty. Okay, so we've got one, two, now number three needs to be a yellow. So let's move this aside. turning my chisel just so that the point is up because this is so hot that the if it if the uh, the tip touches it will melt and I just want to cut through the center see I messed up a couple spots but my um Tool, my burning tool only has one setting. I got mine from Walmart. It's just in the craft section. Um, if you do wood burning, you might have a fancier one that has different tips and different uh, settings. Mine, mine just has the one setting, which is fine for what I do. I mean, You do have to be pretty particular about how you do this because you want it to be you want it to be just so. so you really do have to be particular about how you how you form your petal and I am just putting it kind of in between the previous layers which I'll show you in a second after I attach this. All right, yellow, so I need a white zip tie for the yellow. I'm going underneath and then just over the top of that bar to attach it to the bar. So you can see, I'll hold this up, you can see underneath this layer, the green layer, and what I'm doing as I'm placing the next layer is I'm just kind of going in between right there where you have a nice space for the next layer to lay. So I've got three, I need two more, and my next one is orange. Some people cut all their squares at once and then make, make their petals. I like to do it as I go. I cut one, I make it, I attach it. It's, I just find that it, it keeps my shop cleaner and gets the petals on the frame with less uh, fuss about it. But it's up to you, you know, there's in the crafting world, there's really no wrong way to do things. If you like it, that's all that matters, if it works. down without cutting through the thread. Woohoo! Okay, finished edges to the side, make your triangle. So pretty. 
There are so many variations of these petals um, that you can make. One, two, three, number four, I'm going right in between those green, the greens on the first layer and laying it on top of the yellow. Nice and full. This pro this project is time consuming because you obviously you have to make all these petals, but it's so pretty in the end. And if you're like me, crafting is like therapy. I mean, I have my little studio and I come out and I just spend time out here, you know, making beautiful things. So it's okay. I don't do a lot of these. I mostly do floral, dried floral arrangements, but um, but I do like to do these every now and again. They're fun, and I like to challenge myself with learning how to make the different petals. school is starting in 10 days. My daughter told me, ah, school, I went to school. I'm like, already? What happened to summer? I mean, it's still blazing hot here in Florida, so most of you that follow me are here in Florida, so you know, you know what I'm talking about. We are still in summer, so it does not feel like it's time for the kids to go back to school already. to get on because it's, everything's pretty tight, but it works. Once you get it on, you can adjust it just so. Excess. And there you have it, friends. So this is a basic flower petal with a twist so that the finished edges are together and they make this, this pretty pattern. So they're all going the same direction and they make this nice pattern. Okay, so there is, there is the wreath. Um, without, I'm going to put some ribbon on it. I'll show you the ribbon. It's this gorgeous glitter, orangey glitter ribbon. Look at that ribbon. It couldn't be more perfect. You see that? And then this sign. So this sign will sit. I'm going to put uh, a bow down at the bottom of it and then put a backing on it. And I'll post a video of the finished product but I wanted to show you how I, I made those petals and how I um, attached them to the wreath. Okay, there you go. Thanks for watching.